Well, hello everyone, it's me, Eric Kimball, behind the camera, and I want to focus in this video on that little deck that you see in front of you. This is my house, and a lot of you know already that several years ago I put a 24 foot by 24 foot addition on my house for my wife and I in our senior years. It'll be handicapped accessible with a bedroom and a bathroom downstairs. So we're looking at this deck, and the concept here is that I needed a deck that would allow a wheelchair ramp, and I'm thinking on the left over here, to possibly, if necessary, someday be put in, and a wheelchair could come up onto the small top deck and pivot into the, into the house. The thing that I think is unique about this deck is that I made it without buying any off-the-shelf uh, components. In other words, I didn't buy spindles, I didn't buy handrail, I didn't buy a uh, lattice on the bottom there. I did not buy post caps. I made it all. It's all pressure treated. It will require some yearly upkeep and maintenance, but that's okay, it's, it's small. And I wanna just focus on uh, a few different things first, explain them, and then end up telling you how I made these post caps. So right here you can see the lattice. I don't like crisscross lattice. It looks hokey to me. I like the up and down look right there, the vertical uh, slats. Those are three quarter inch. They're screwed into the, the board at the top and the bottom with uh, screws from the inside. And this this right here is a three quarter inch board. The, the um, joists are two by sixes. And so that board hangs down, gives me enough room to um, make those, uh, screw those in from the back. And um, I do have access on the other side, I'll show you. On this side I have a removable access panel. And you can see a screw right here, and a screw right here, and down there, and down there. Take those screws out, and the panel comes right out, and we could get in there if we wanted to. I don't think it would be a good idea to make that without some sort of access. What you're looking at right here is a piece of a five quarter inch decking. This is what I used for the decking and for the stair treads right here. And I took these boards, which typically come pretty clear, meaning not a lot of knots or no, virtually no knots. It's pretty nice wood. And that's what I made the bottom rail right here and the top rail right there, and all these spindles. They were cut out of that right there, the decking boards. I wanna end up here on these post caps and tell you how I made them. You can see all six of them showing right there, and we'll come up here and just take a look at this as I explain that these, like the rest of the deck, are made of pressure treated. Now, I'm gonna tell you how I made these. They have a, a, a homemade custom uh, charm to them, I think. This one here, after uh, putting it on, I thought to myself, gosh, that ought to be like one inch lower, one inch lower. But um, I wasn't about to drop it down. You just uh, do these things so that they look good by eye, and my eye wasn't looking right at that point. But in any event, uh, the, the deck, that's the deck. It's, uh, I'm ha very happy with it. We'll go inside, and I'll tell you now how I made these post caps. Okay, let's start with the post. This shows the top of a post with square corners, like it comes from the lumber yard. I like to round the corners, like you see right here. This is the router bit I used to round those corners. It's a one quarter inch radius roundover bit. As you can see, it has a lot of mileage on it. I used the same router bit to round over the edges of my handrails and spindles. This is a cross section of a spindle cut out of a five quarter inch decking board. The post caps are made with three joined components. Here you can see the first part that I secure to the top of the post. This piece is three quarters inches thick and it's sized to two and a quarter inches wider than the post. So once installed, it overhangs the post one and an eighth inches all around. This cap piece has two routed profiles. As you can see, the profile on the top is the same one quarter inch radius roundover that I've showed you. For the bottom profile, I used this well-worn Coven bead router bit. That's what I've always called it, and I've used it for decades. I don't know the exact size, but I found this bit on Amazon. 
This router bit profile is very close to my old Coven bead bit. Not exact, but close enough. It's sold as a classical OG, like you see here. I have Amazon affiliate links to all these router bits in my description below. This first cap piece is secured with three inch long screws like you see here. That countersinking drill bit is a downright useful tool. I got a link for that below too. The second post top part is shown here. It's cut out of the five quarter inch decking. I cut the 45 degree bevel with my table saw. What I want you to notice in this picture is that I'm going to put the second cap piece the five quarter inch piece on top of the other piece with the grain turned 90 degrees. Your pieces will be less likely to warp if the grain is not running the same way on both of them. Here you can see the five quarter top piece screwed into place. Drive the screws down below the surface some so the screw heads can be sealed over with caulk. Here's another view. Cove molding goes around the post under the top pieces. They don't make pressure treated cove molding, so I made my own using this one half inch cove router bit. I routed the cove down the length of a three quarter inch thick pressure treated board. Then I ripped the molded piece off on a table saw. Then I ripped it again, so it ended up being 9 16 inch by 9 16 inch, as you can see here. The four pieces of cove molding are easier to measure if you first lay a short length in place and draw a pencil line on all four sides like you see here. You will, of course, be doing this with the post upright, not upside down like I'm showing. With the pencil lines drawn like that, you can easily see the outside point of each piece and mark your length like I'm doing in this picture. A power stapler or nailer works very well for attaching these pieces. Unfortunately, my old nailer broke partway through my deck project, so I ended up using trim screws like you see here. I used a 1 8 inch drill bit to make a pilot hole for each screw. I made a countersink for the screw heads using a Phillips screwdriver tip in my drill. Here you can see that I've bedded the cove molding in exterior painter's caulk before screwing it in place. This is the caulk that I used. I smoothed the excess caulk away with my finger like you see here, and I can use any uh, excess caulk to fill over the screw heads. Now, when I made my deck, I bedded the top cap pieces in caulk also so that it squeezed out. Then I let it dry and I cut away the excess like I show in this little clip. A sander can be used to remove excess caulk on the post tops. A piece of rolled up sandpaper can be used to remove caulk and spiff up cove molding corners as needed. So now you know exactly how I make these traditional style pressure treated post caps. If you enjoyed this video, I sure would appreciate a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to this channel if you have not already because you never know what you're going to get here and it might be something really good. Thanks a lot everyone. I'll see you in the next one.